Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Raw Facts. Our Virgil at the jump point has paid off here in Berlin. We just detected Hossa Transit, two ships from our new Alien Frenzy, the Domi, came through and let's see if we are able to take them down before they get their weapons up. So, first of all, let's launch a couple of our heavy fighters. Mm, there are two ships, so let's build or let's launch two strike groups. And this strike group should follow our friends at first at point blank range, at least as long as they still have um, their sensors and fire controls down. It should be pretty safe to stay at point blank range. Follow. And at point blank range, we should be able to cause 16 damage. And due to our long reload uh, reload time, we will then move to about uh, 100,000 kilometers, which should still yield 6 damage and a 70% hit probability. Depending on their speed, we, we should be fine, I dare to say, especially in combination with our great bonus here. Okay, that's first strike team, and the second strike team will follow the other contact. In the meantime, our main fleet will follow the well, first contact as well. And if we manage to stay inside the Gauss range, let's take a look here. At the moment they're at point blank range and depending on their speeds we might be able to keep them inside the range we need to, to hit them here. So let's assign our Gauss turrets and put them on final defensive fire. Ah, that was wrong. Set mode set mode to final defensive fire here and copy this to the other Bismarck and target the first alien craft here. I think we are following the second, but it's not that important. I'll target the second with the Blüchers here and copy this to the other. Okay, uh, uh, let's open fire with the fleet for now. The Shanos have no offensive weapons, those are our carriers. But our Blüchers do have weapons. I will keep the missiles out of it for the moment and just use the Gauss on those as well. Put them to final defense fire. Target the second ship. And copy the assignments to the other Blüchers. Yeah, looking good. Open fire here as well. The rest are our fast tech craft still staying in the hangar. And that is fine for now. So our first heavy fighter still has its old target up. 
Uh, copy this one, open fire here as well, yeah, looking good. And finally, assign, copy, open fire. Open fire, open fire. Weapon is firing. Okay, this looks good. Another quick look. Number two is targeting the first one. Oh, no. Don't, oh, yeah, target, no, the second one, yeah. Lit two by number two and lit one by number three. Let's take a quick look if we are following the correct chips. Yep, following lit two. Following lit one. And it's not important what the main fleet is following oh, lit two. Okay, let's see what happens here. Anything else interesting going on? No. Yeah, I have forgotten to up the initiative, so most likely they will be able to put some distance between us and them if they are moving. And this five second turn is taking ages. I hope it's all the buttons hitting which are causing the delay here. That's a long five seconds. If they are still alive after this, I will activate the space time bubble again. <laughs> Here we go. Let's take a closer look at this one. Okay, too many hits to be shown here. Here we go. Uh, hit for 16, that's nice. Distance of 10, okay. 121% chance, yeah, that's nice. So obviously they are not that fast. And the Gauss turrets are hitting as well. They were unable to move more than 10,000 kilometers it seems, so that's nice. And they're very slow, so we were essentially able to stay at our preferred range here. That's nice as well. So let's take a closer look. Wow, armor strength of at least six. Impressive. And I dare to say, due to the high to hit chances, that every single shot hit. And it's streaming atmosphere, that's nice. So at least a couple of our shots got through. Okay, but both ships are still up, so... Let's think about it, what to do now. I'll keep peppering them with the Gauss, and due to the damage already done, I think there's a decent chance that the Gauss will be able to finish them off. So let's split our fleet here. The main fleet is following whom? Lit 2. Let's up the initiative now. Set. And you guys are going to follow 
lit one. Follow. Let's up the initiative here as well. And activate the space time bubble. Yeah, I keep the heavy fighters out for now. If they are able to fire at us, it might help to have a more a couple of more ships they can shoot at instead of going for the unarmored carriers. Still taking quite some time despite the space time bubble. Here we go. Thermal signature changed from 750 down to 250. That's nice. So we got a couple of nice hits in. And it seems like we have a wreck here. Yeah, and the ship is picking up speed now. 4000, so it's faster than our ships. Let's see who survived here. Lit one did survive and is moving away from us. 15k is the current distance. So let's switch targets for the Blüchers as well. Assign this. a sign. Ah, okay, yeah, we don't need any target on our missile fire controls. Once they start shooting at us, I might open up with the AMMs as well, but at the moment I'm still confident that we should be able to take them out via Gauss. And copy target and assignments. Yeah, looking good. What's the range on those ones? 15k as well. And I'll land the FACs now. I have to remember to stop them firing, otherwise we'll get arrows here. Land on a side mother ship. Which might be a problem due to the initiative. <laughs> oh, but we'll see. But most likely they might be unable to land since when they get where the mother ship is and they try to land, it's very likely that the mother ship has already moved away since it has higher initiative than the 292. Oh, let's remove this one first. And land on the side mothership. 292 for one of them and 295 for the other. So I just dropped down the initiative to 291 to enable both of them to land. And it's not that much of a drop. Okay. No, two is destroyed, so we need a new target here. Photo number one. Okay, and stop the Sturmvogels from firing. Here we go. Let's see if we can get another salvo in before they are able to escape from our range. Here we go. What did I do wrong? They should have had higher initiative. 
out of range. Okay, here we go. That was what I've been afraid of. So we have to play this differently. How fast are those aliens moving? Still at 4K. Okay, that's not good. So let's reassemble the fleet and stand by for attacks. At the moment it's hard to say if those ships are missile based or energy based because they could be energy based but are running away due to having fire delays since they just mm, came from the the jump but on the other hand they might simply be missile ships trying to to open up the distance to our fleet and on the side mother ship 295 this one should have worked 292 And our main fleet is... Ah, there's my mistake. I put the initiative of our Bismarcks down, which will not be very helpful. And this might explain the problem they had with landing in the first case, since there are no carriers in Carrier Task Force 3. At least at the moment but it might work now no most likely it will still not work but that's okay i'll redo the order after this join and let's cease fire on those turrets here I could shoot the AMMs at them, but I don't want to. <laughs> I'm all about saving missiles for the times when they're needed. Yeah, no big surprise since there was no carrier on this task force. So let's do this again and this should work now. land on a signed mothership. In addition, I'll return to the jump gate after this to put some more distance between us, us and the enemy. CTF-3. Uh, which one was it? Düsseldorf. Move to. Thirty seconds should be enough. They are still moving away. Due to the size, I doubt that this is a survey ship. So most likely, let's check again. Still moving away. Yeah, they, they should have come out of jump shock by now. So it's very likely that we are facing a missile ship here. Let's see if we see missiles. Nothing at the moment. but it's still very short range here. Signal has been lost. Ah, 25 seconds. That's interesting. Hmm. 
30 seconds, okay. So if I don't see any missiles, let's go up five minutes here. Still no missiles. So maybe, maybe they don't have any missiles left. So let's take a little risk here. Let's pick our heavy fighters and send them after our new friends. Without any point defense cover, but I hope that they do not have any missiles. Mm, let's stick at a range of 100 here. And move the initiative up to 295. We have roughly twice the speed, so it should not be that hard to catch up to them. Anything else I wanted to do? No, not really. Actually, we're more than twice as fast. So, let's get a little bit closer here. Hundred sixty six, thirty nine, eleven. Target range. Assign, copy the target and open fire. Yeah, looking good. Strength 11 hits. Six of them, so each volley hit and each volley seemed to have caused steaming atmosphere, so we penetrate their armor, which each of those hits. Yeah, two hit chances look like 100% plus. Yeah, not, not really 100% plus, but close to 100%. And in some cases above it, so that's nice. But our friend is still alive. Due to our long reload time for the spinal lasers, I'll take a two minute turn here. Oh, no, they're trying to move towards us. Interesting. And we have a nice wreck. Okay, so much for the incursion into our system. Where is our search and rescue boat? No, we don't want you to move back to Earth just now. We want you to pick up a couple of survivors. And the tuck is currently in the system since we engaged a couple of small Sardumi ships before. Those are the wrecks. 3550 tons, most likely Geo or Graf Scouts. And we picked up the crews already and our salvager is moving towards Berlin to salvage those wrecks. And they can add those two 9,100 ships to their list as well. So that's nice. Cease fire again and land on your motherships. Task group 3, land on assigned mothership, add move. 5 minutes. Oh, not really. Okay, let's set the word back into motion by 
disabling the space-time bubble. What else have I been doing in the main time, meantime? I've designed a little corvette here. I started with it some time ago, but made some further modifications since seeing that we will most likely have to enter the nebula. And as I've shown you the last time, the nebula is slowing our ships down due to it being a nebula to... Mm, that was a wrong run... 625 uh, per armor level so we need... we want a nice bunch of armor especially since inside a nebula we will have to rely on beam weapons armor is not bad at all for this so our sightlets corvette is in theory able to move at about 7.5k but due to having only 10 armor it will be limited to 6250 inside the nebula I'm still not convinced what kinds of weapons I want to use. Most likely I'll be using a spinal laser, a single spinal laser on you on those as well. But before fitting those ships with a spinal laser, I'm waiting for capacitor recharge rate 4 to finish, which is not that far off since then we will be able <coughs> excuse me to build a nice spinal laser it has a power requirement of 16 due to causing 16 damage and we would be able to recharge it in 20 seconds once we get our recharge rate 4 and due to this I'm waiting a little bit longer Okay, anything else which happened in the meantime? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Not really, we spread out a couple of additional auto mines. Since our shipyards are in refit mode here at the moment, and those refits are using some of our duranium. Most of the refits need gallocyte since we are mainly adding new engines here or swapping out engines but I think a couple use duranium as well since we are not only refitting but we are building a couple of new ships here as well what else did happen that much here. Our uranium stockpile is still rising, but not only due to the mass drivers sending their minerals back from those colonies, but via manual transfers from Munich here as well. But all in all, the mineral situation is okay. We don't need the thorium, our fuel factories are still stopped, but we got a nice stockpile from our fuel harvesters, so fuel is no concern of us here, or for us at the moment. Mm, no, what are we building at the moment? I'm pre building a fairly large number of new military drives and still trying to build additional research labs in order to complete our projects faster. I'm not sure if it happened during the last episode or in between episodes but 
we've got the new research rate here. 320 is our current research rate. Yeah, there it is. This should help with the research as well. And since we met our alien friends, and I think I did put this one in the last episode, we are starting to build real attackers in order to search out their homeworld and possibly start an invasion there. Okay, with this, and since you have seen the glacial speeds we are getting here, I'll pause again till something interesting is happening. Our Geo team has completed the survey of Berlin before, and they found a nice number of additional deposits of neutronium and boronite, but the most important has been they have increased the, increased the accessibility of iridium from 0.1 to 0.9. And if we take a look at our colony here, we do have 135 million, whatever they are, let's call it tons, of 90% accessi uh, accessible, accessible iridium now. So I dare to say we will never have any iridium problems. And in addition a new research lab has been completed on Earth. Earth. So let's take a look where to put this one. 29th of June. I don't think adding one will make a big difference. It should tick to or the next tick around there should be the 27th of June. Yeah, so 26 is quite good. Yep, I'll, I'll keep it there. In other news, our transport delivered a prefabricated PDC to Berlin B4 and the the, 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 what is it actually? Our couple of construction factories there are starting to assemble it now, but it will take quite some time before it's finished. But at the moment the population is not complaining about needing additional protection, and since our civilian transports still seem to dislike moving additional infrastructure here, it does not look like they will need or want protection anytime soon. And our salvager should be getting close to the to the Rex here. I've already split up one of the two transports of this salvage group to move to the larger probably military ships we destroyed earlier here. But the salvager will start with those four small wrecks. And pause and get for now. Well, what do we have here? Another couple of visitors. Oh, one visitor to be more precise. I think we have not seen this ship before. No, the first one. But our salvager has been busy and cleared up those smaller ships I suspected to be survey ships. And this proved to be true since I fi found some geosensors on it and are now working on the ships which tried to run from us, us earlier. So another 9,100 ton ship. Yeah. So let's release our heavy fighters again. Split off. This time I remember to activate or to raise the initiative. 
contacts, photo, point blank range here at first and then go to distance as before. And let's let's add in the the fleet. No need to take any chances here. And as we saw earlier, those Gauss cannons did cause quite decent damage. Which isn't that surprising, considering that we are talking about... What are we talking about, actually? Three turrets here, quad turrets, so six. And two here, uh, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. Twenty quad turrets, so eighty guns with three shots per gun at the moment at our tech level. Yeah, 240 projectiles causing one damage. This should hurt. So, assign, 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 and luckily we only have to do this once for each class of ship. Sign and the sign. Open fire. Yeah, looking good. Looking good as well. And finally, sign. Copy target. Open fire. Everybody's following our new friends. And due to the experience before. I activate space-time bubble right now and go for it. Here we go, and we have a wreck. Very nice. New wreck and burden. Gain armor of 6 plus, point blank range, and one of our Bismarcks scored the kill. So let's record this one as well in order to hand out some medals later on. It's the Defender. Okay, so that was a quick one. I would not even call it a real fight. But that's a nice thing about the large ball lasers, the spinal lasers here. If they are able to intercept an enemy right at the jump point and they are not overwhelmed by the number of enemies, they will cause a lot of damage even at this fairly low tech level and are pretty much able to destroy a ship in one volley. How many shots did we actually need here? Uh, all of them seems. Where did the 16 start? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, not exactly all of them. There might be an additional one up here, but that's not that important. But it's nice to know that we will need a whole flight of the all of our six Sturmvogels to bring one of those down. As we've seen earlier, we have to we had to fire twice on them, if I recall correctly. Okay, let's bring our tuck back to get another couple of prisoners.
Life pods move to burn in. Rescue those, and maybe we'll get some additional contacts in the meantime. Till they arrive there. And pausing again. Okay, I'm not sure I've really covered refits before, and I'm not sure as well if I've shown you our new destroyer escort. I divided the Blücher into two different kinds of classes. First of a regular destroyer escort without any sensors here, just the missiles, the AM, AMMs and the missile fire controls. And a leader, a destroyer leader, namely our Blüchers here which still do have the sensor. So I'm thinking about refitting them in a ratio of 1 to 2 or 1 to 3, something like this. And since there's not much difference between a Blücher and a Deutschland, just a sensor essentially, we are able to build both from the same shipyard, which is nice. At the moment we are refitting two Blüchers already. Yeah, two Blüchers, there they are. So let's do another Deutschland. Refit to Deutschland. And we want to refit one of our old Blüchers. When you click read, uh, refit details down here, you can see the things that are being changed. So it's essentially just another fuel storage, a couple of more launchers, a new missile fire control, and the biggest part, the most expensive part, four new engines. We should have enough stockpile engines, yes we do. So it should be a fairly quick refit due to it. The normal refit costs are uh, where it is, close to 500, but since we already have the plasma drives it will be more like 180, I'm not sure if it's a one-to-one -one deduction or if there's still some points needed for the actual installation of the engines, but the real refit cost should be around 200 points, so it should be fairly quick. Okay, uh, back to shipyards. Refit 2, add task. Normally it would end in mid-December, based on those build costs. But with our pre-built components, we are down to the beginning of August. So that's nice. Anything else? No, not really. Pausing. One of our geo-survey ships have found an alien installation on the Rostock A2. This is nice. In addition to a couple of minerals, but sadly low accessibility. But let's establish a colony there in order to have a look with one of our Xeno teams at those ruins. Where have I left those Xeno teams actually? Uh, still on Mars? No. Here they are. So let's disband them, send them to Rostock. Uh, unassigned, okay, you've got an assignment now. 
What about this guy? Political reliability, we don't need this. Uh, not that great, so Xeno Team Duty for you. Xeno Team Duty for you. You'll stay at the, your construction brigade. Xeno Duty here. You'll get a construction brigade. And you'll pick up Xeno Duty too. So let's create this team. Uh, quite, quite a lot better than the original one. That's nice. Okay, pausing again. Okay, we've got our capacitator recharge rate at 4 now. So it's time to build a new laser. But first let's stick the power propulsion guy to a new job. What do we want? Uh, uh, engine modifier would be nice, but on the other hand I want to get started on new engine tech soon as well, so let's move or let's go with one lap here for the moment. And who are we using for energy buttons? Laser focus size. No, let's cancel this one. Well, we will want a new laser. Lasers, larger size, spun mount. Rate of fire 20 seconds, that's great. Let's make a note here, rate of fire 20. Create. Energy weapons, there's a laser. can only use she can only use 15 laps anyway so when will it be completed 19th we just got to interrupt on the 27th so we will not need this number of laps now I'm not add I want to remove 21st uh, yeah, 21st should be fine. And where to add the slab? Oh, to the fire control speed. Okay. Mainly I want to put this one on the fire control speed due to what we've found during our salvage. Mm, where is the Gaia one? Should be... It isn't that large. Oh, wrong. <laughs> it's larger than I've thought. Uh, oh. Ah, tech data is down here. We found a uh, fire control rating of 10,000 on one of those um, AIM wrecks we salvaged. So we got ourselves a nice chunk of research points for our current fire control research. Actually, let's take a look which ship not this one. Yeah, here we go. The lid was obviously a beam ship and they've got very nice fire control tech. So I hope they will come through this jump gate with a couple of additional ships so we can advance our research by salvaging them. And I think think with this ah, just uh, just a quick note 
because what I want to do if possible is add better file control to our new Corvette here. It will not be useful inside the nebula but when we are fighting outside of nebulas no, even then we would not be hindered by the fire control speed. I think I'll slow down on the fire control research here because at the moment we will not gain much from using a better fire control. I'll keep this one as it is, I think. And with this, yeah, a good point to end this episode. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.